<clears throat> so welcome to this elapsed webinar and I'm just showing you the um, London AWL etiquette. In summary then we aim to be professional and kind, everybody's relaxed and we always put a disclaimer to say that we're very happy to host these events and we don't charge participants or speakers. Um, speakers obviously give their um, service without any payment and run the events. Speakers and participants are responsible for what they say. So now over to the Elapse team. Hello and um, welcome. Before we get started on the presentation, I'd just like to say a few words. Um, as some of you may recognise me. I'm, I'm Jane Harvey and, and, and during the time we were working on the Elapse, I was the president of AWL. And it was absolutely one of the highlights of my two years to be able to take part in this project and um, to launch it last Saturday and now again um, today. So I'm very excited to have um, representatives from all our partners here to tell you all about this wonderful resource that we've made over the last two years. Um, as Helen says, please use the chat, please ask us questions or make comments. Um, as you see, um, everything that we've, we've provided on the, on the website for you. And I'm now going to hold it, hand over to our um, a representative of our lead partner, that's LFEE, which is up in Edinburgh. So over to you, Richard. Merci, chère Jane. Bonsoir, hola, everybody. Nice to, nice to see you. As Jane said, I am in, in Edinburgh uh, tonight. And yes, I am missing the Scotland game uh, against Serbia, which is a key game because they haven't, Scotland haven't qualified in 30, for 30 years. Anyway, um, delighted to be here and, and, and proud, delighted and proud because this is a the, the culmination of, of two years, two years working hard with all these wonderful partners. You can see some of them, 50% of the team, all the partners are represented, but you can see 50% of the partners just now on the screen. Um, and LFE, as you said, Jane was the lead partner, but we've been working really closely with each one of these partners and, and it's been a great, uh, a great experience. Who are the partners? Uh, to the left of my screen anyway, we have from Austria, Ron, uh, from PH Wien University. Yeah, thank you, Ron. Uh, just uh, to the right, Diana, and I think Sandra is there, from Cafe in, Cast in um, Galicia. Uh, Christine Pretzel, do you want to say hello, Christine, in, Mon in Nîmes, I think you are tonight, but representing l'Académie de Montpellier. Um, our colleagues from Castilla et Leon could not join us tonight because they have a big... Um, they have a big uh, training session tonight, but they came on on Saturday morning when we launched um, in, here in Scotland. We launched it at this, the, the resources at the Soul Conference. All our colleagues from AWL, I think you know them all, but Stephen, do you want to say hello, hello. Stephen? And Krista and Jane, of course. Um, and last but not least, my colleague Nadine, who represented uh, Power Language. Nadine, do you want to say hello? Hello well? from Brittany. Uh, who's that is in Britain just now? It must be quite dark and late for you. No. Well, um, yeah, I should be in bed, really. You should be in bed. <laughs> you got your pajamas there. So, um, and I'm Richard, uh, as Jane said, I lead LFE Europe based in Edinburgh. So I'm going to share my screen now and go straight to the website and share with sound. Okay. Can you, see, everybody, can you see the website? Yeah, thank you. So, uh, dear colleagues from all over Europe, um, this is the address, lfe.net slash elapse. Uh, all these resources are there for you. Um, they've been designed by all of these partners in four languages. Um, the idea from the start was to create uh, ambitious, resources uh, which could be embedded in a meaningful meaningful way into into the primary and secondary curriculum these resources were designed for upper primary transition into secondary and lower secondary school so it's really they were designed to be embedded into your uh, curriculum um, the idea as well is to challenge and motivate um, you <laughs> practitioners but our learners as well um, ELAPS is built around four sections, Embedded Languages, which is an online course, which we will present in one minute. The actual resources, 21 sets of resources in four languages, will be presented in five minutes. A learning Pathways to help you create your own resources. And a good practice guide, let's hear it from some of the experts. Um, 
around the world. Embedded languages, so very simple navigation. Click on embedded languages and it's um, an online course presenting what do we mean by embedded? What do we mean by CLIL and soft CLIL? In fact, uh, Nadine. Yes, Richard. What, cher Nadine, what do we mean by CLIL and what does CLIL stand for? Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire? Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire? Well, we could be playing a game of uh, Hangman, um, which you'll, you'll probably enjoy when you discover the, uh, the platform. But CLIL, uh, if you're not familiar with it, stands for content and language integrated learning. Um, so it means that if you plan, uh, if you want to plan a clear lesson, you need to consider both content and language. Um, but knowing that you have some flexibility within that. So depending on your context, you'll be able to give more emphasis to one or the other as um, you'll be able to demonstrate Richard um, my lovely assistant. No problem. Like to... <laughs> I, I, I will. Are you ready? One way of thinking about it is in terms of hard clill versus soft clill. Both views include the use of a foreign language to teach. They only differ with regard to their objectives. Hard clill focuses more on the content, whereas soft clill focuses more on language learning. As CLIL research is evolving, definitions change and CLIL researchers begin to move more and more away from this distinction. However, it is a very useful perspective on how CLIL may be implemented in your own teaching. So, yeah. yes, thank you very much. So really, this is to reassure everybody that you have some flexibility within CLIL, that it's not a static way of looking at um, preparing lessons. But um, a very distinctive feature of uh, CLIL is what is commonly referred to as the four C's. So again, um, if you'd like to start the video, you'll discover what the four C's are. Oui. Well, you can see that um, on the sûr, screen. Ça. When we plan CLIL lessons, we have to think about the following domains, content, communication, cognition, and culture. This is also known as the four C's framework. Um, when you explore uh, this section of um, ELAPS, you'll be able to, of course, find the full definitions of each of the C's um, on the video on other documents. But you'll also be able to see demonstrations of the four C's in action. Um, and that's through uh, the recording of a science experiment lesson, which was conducted into a primary Scottish classroom. And you might recognize uh, the, uh, the teacher on the day. Um, so what you, we're going to show you is a demonstration of cognition. So um, remembering that before what you're going to see, uh, the teacher has presented uh, the language um, of learning and some of the language for learning. Um, so names of fruit, structures um, to talk about floatability of uh, fruit. And um, now the, the extract that you're about to see, as I mentioned, will demonstrate what we mean by cognition in this particular lesson. So Richard, if you want to click, please. Next, the learners test their predictions by conducting the experiment themselves. They record their results on their worksheets in groups. La fraise, elle... Um, so when Richard started, he mentioned the fact that uh, some of the really 
um, positive features of, of CLEAL is the engagement motivation um, of um, learners. And I think that it's really demonstrated within this lesson with uh, learners working on higher order thinking skills as well through their predictions and then testing of their predictions with very young learners. Um, so hopefully, Absolutely. Sorry, I was going to say it's no. interesting because the class, the learners were about age 10, I seem to remember. They didn't know me. I'd never met them before. Some of them didn't speak English even, but very quickly they all joined in and you can see the, the motivation. And as you were saying, Nadine, the enthusiasm was, was incredible. So embedding, is it a good idea? We think so. We will, we're, we're explaining there, but this, but we're lucky to have a partner from uh, Spain, Galicia. Diana, are you with us just now? Mm -hmm. And I know that in Spain, um, uh, a few years ago, 20 years ago, maybe, teaching languages was not necessarily very easy for you uh, in Spain, but I know you've made huge progress. So how did you start your revolution in Spain? Yeah, to be honest, um, maybe the problem at the time was that there was too much focus on the grammar teaching. And so students were lacking the communicative competence at the end of, the, of their schooling. So there was a big change in the policy regarding languages um, so that it was more, as you said, embedding languages, starting teaching languages from earlier ages, from pre-primary and focusing maybe on changing attitudes, of course. Um, That's you know, interesting. So, so you change your methodology, the way you were teaching, uh, you started to embed a bit more, but what you're saying as well is that you ch try to change attitudes in, in Spain, in Spanish society? Yeah, uh, exactly. Because uh, we thought it was important to nurture a feel good and can do attitude towards language in general and uh, to empower students in that way, uh, to create opportunities for them to practice the language since the communicative competence was in the end the objective. And of course, of course, to involve families because if we thought that this is a joint effort and so it was really important to count on their support and for them to have a good attitude and to understand the importance and the relevance of learning languages. Well, in a way, that's music to our ears, Diana, because in the UK, that's what we're trying to do, win hearts and minds and, and maybe try to embed a bit more the way we, you know, the way we teach languages. Let's hear it from 15 years later, after 15 years, so this was maybe in 2000, 2005, your revolution in Spain. Let's hear it from the learners now, which is also on the website. By the way, I'd just like to say I'm navigating the website live for everybody, and I'm glad that it's, it's working fine. So let's hear it from the learners now. Uh, these are learners from... Castilla y León, not far from, from Galicia. And maybe a question to you watching this little video. Let me go for big screen. What do you notice? Could you maybe use the chat box to, to come up with some comments of what you see there on the screen? Uh, I think that uh, if we have uh, the second obligatory language in, in the high school is very useful because uh, maybe in the future I have to go to another country to study or to find a job. And uh, I agree with all of them because speaking a second language is very important for all the things that they have said, for example, finding jobs or do travels around the world that is, for example, Okay, I'll just stop there. They, they go on and on. Uh, could we, Jane and Chris, I don't know if you can monitor the chat, but I would like to get some, some feedback. What do you think? What do you notice with these, these learners? And I'll stop sharing now, actually. And when we do that, I might emphasize, Richard, uh, from what you were saying, there are about 75% um, 75 uh, 75 of schools nowadays in Galicia that are either bilingual or um, multilingual. And, um, and of course, I know it was a 10, 11 year, year uh, plan, and now it's really bearing fruit, so. Okay, that's, thank you, Diana, very interesting. I also work around Spain a lot, from Canary Islands to main, mainland Spain, and I would say about 50% of schools are, are bilingual centros, no? So that's what you, you call them, Diana. 
Yeah. Okay. Without further ado, let's move on to now section two. Maybe I think Krista, you're gonna, you're, you're lucky. You're gonna be presenting the juicy bits, the 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 actual resources. Yeah, absolutely, I am. But I just want to refer to the chat and people are just wowed by their level of English, the confidence by which the learners are speaking in that video, you know, the, the articulation, the fluency, Darnell was just saying, it's just brilliant, it's amazing. You know, Chris has said, you know, the... Um, the, the confidence, Becky has said the high level of fluency. <laughs> Mr. Fork has said they are so good looking. And evidently, I think by that, I think he means enjoying themselves as well. They all look so, so well and so healthy. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> right, okay. Um, Montserrat has said they're all at home. They're all at home and this is really key, isn't it? Certainly in 2020, now we're in this, you know, new normal and obviously remote learning. You know, students can learn at home and quite clearly are A, happy and B, engaged in and doing it. So that's that's what's been picked up so far. Is that okay? Can I? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, talk? competent, confident, good looking. That's, uh, I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm not sure that's linked to, to the embedding side of things, the, the, the clear <laughs> side of things, but still it's, yeah, agreed. It's that right, there we go. And they can eat it and it's good for them with a proud teacher looking and being happy at how much her learners can see. Over to you, Krista. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I Can you see my screen? Can you see yes. uh, everyone? I hope you can, that's brilliant. Right, okay, so um, I get the really amazing, as Risha said, the really amazing and exciting job to share with you some of the incredible resources. And, and I have to say, I'm gonna do this live from the website. Now I know there are millions of people around the globe not playing on the new um, uh, platform console that's just been released today, but clearly on the Elapse website. So if it's a bit slow, it's not normally like this on Saturday, it worked beautifully, but today, because so many thousands of people across the globe are on our amazing Elapse website, that's the reason why, so apologies. So if we go to the Elapse website there, then, um, and if I just scroll down, um, she says, hopefully thinking that she can do that, then actually you'll see from the page, um, oh, and it doesn't even want to do that. It's interesting. Um, so you'll see from the page, there we go. It's catching up with me, um, that it just scrolls down to resources. So down to resources, quite simply, um, and you just click on it and it's just gonna take a, a little moment, but it takes us to the resources. This website is really easy to use, really, really straightforward. And actually you'll find that our resources have been very carefully, and I have to say very beautifully crafted by the team that you see this evening. I'm, I, I'm a very late um, entrant into this um, team, but they have worked incredibly um, to craft beautiful resources, looking at each of their frameworks, their curriculums from every single partner country, you know, um, and to make sure that these are real resources, um, useful resources that are appropriate um, for learners, not only learning the subject, but also learning through a language. And I think that's that's really important um, because we don't just want to have a nice whizzy bang lesson with some nice resources. Actually, we want some really solid, robust learning. And we talk in the UK a lot um, about um, appropriate um, curriculum, appropriate learning. You know, we need to teach students um, pencil case items and things like that and hobbies. But actually, we really want to get um, um, a little bit meatier curriculum. And this and the resources that I'm going to show you. Um, that um, will absolutely tick all of those boxes. So when you're on the resources um, page, you'll see here, it's a, um, there's the four languages. So these are the languages which the, um, the students will learn the language through. So we've got Spanish, German, French, and English right there. Now I should say that all of the resources um, are, will just cascade down this page. So depending on what language you are looking to um, teach, then obviously you can use these. If you're teaching English, then obviously you can learn, you know, you can click on the English button and and then there'll be the resources. I'm going to look at the Spanish ones today because um, our partners who presented at the SALT conference on Saturday aren't, aren't here this evening. So I thought, you know, I'd show their resource. Um, so we've got here six areas. So we've got expressive arts, science, numeracy, social sciences, physical education. And I've seen Kirsten's name in the um, in the audience and chat and, and Kirsten um, as uh, many people who were, were part of crafting these resources with us and with the partners. So thank you so much, all of you, for coming. It's a really proud moment um, to have you all. So the appropriacy of these topics then, we wanted to make sure that students had a robust language learning, but also um, 
really strong um, language. So if they're learning, let's say, for example, let's have a look at social sciences. If they're learning something in social sciences or you saw their science or mathematics, then actually they are learning technical language that they are then expected to use. It's not just a here's some vocabulary, we're just going to give it a cursory nod, you know, a nice lesson perhaps. It's actually really robust. So if you go into a science lesson, you know, students may already know that content and may be able to link that content. And, and our projects, um, the age range commences um, at about six and goes right the way through to 14 years old. So depending on where you are, depending on your groups of learners, you will find projects that suit your learners. Um, and obviously any of the resources were, um, can always be adapted and differentiated to support your learners. So if you have EAL learners, the English resources there might be appropriate, but you might have to differentiate them. Of course, also, we do have levels of challenge within them. You might want to show those, um, look at um, extension activities as well. So the 21 projects then across the four languages, so we've got 84 in total, obviously used a CLIL methodology and soft CLIL methodology um, to which uh, Richard and Nadine have spoken about already. So we're going to have really meaningful science lessons, really meaningful um, um, arts lessons, if that's what you choose to do. So I've gone to the resources page and I've clicked on Spanish and social sciences. So what I've got here now is world map. So these are our projects, um, natural disasters, guess who, feudalism in the middle ages, oceans and continents, animals of the rainforest. So we've got quite a lot here. So let's say for example, um, let's have a look at natural disasters. So if I have a look at that and show the resources, just click on this. Um, you'll see there that we've got a um, planner, we've got the presentation and we've got support documents. And if you keep scrolling down the page as well you'll see there's a video presentation which does also have sound um, and in fact for this particular project you've got a couple of videos and you've also got sound files as well because when we were road testing this with some teachers earlier in the year and looking at the projects teachers who were non-specialists so someone like you know me who was um had um spanish on my timetable Table, but I was really concerned about my accent and I really wanted a native speaker. I was a bit, you know, I'm a French teacher by trade, so um, I didn't want my Spanish to sound very French. Um, I really wanted it to be Spanish. Our, our um, teachers who were testing the resources said, please, could we have some sound files? So there's a zip file there with not only the script, but also a native speaker recording that will help you to just either use that for vocabulary to um, help you with your confidence and your um, development your pronunciation um, of Spanish, but also to just give your learners the opportunity to hear a different voice. It's always really lovely to hear different voices. And we know from, um, for those of you who teach Key Stage 3, Key Stage 4, Key Stage 5, um, it's always nice and, and students need to know um, and hear different voices, um, native voices, so, so they can pick it up in terminal assessment if we go that far. So if we look at, for example, if I scroll back up and we look at the um, planner, there is a full lesson plan plan here because again it's not just I know there are sites that just deliver resources and you can just download them they send emails out often on a Sunday saying are you stuck for your um, lessons this week here come and have a look at our resources and that's great but actually when you come to the elapse um website when when you come to the LFE uh, well sorry the elapse website you, it's housed on the LFE website but click on the elapse button at the top you'll see that and once you've chosen it you'll see not only the resources but a lesson plan and this one here is a three page lesson plan so you've got um the age level who it's for there 11 to 14 here we've got it's about natural disasters it's going to be in spanish uh, we've got the outcomes here, we've got the four C's that have already been mentioned, and crucially, we've got um, communication here look, and breaking down language of learning, language for learning, and language through learning, and this is really key because, as we've said, and I've said so many times, it's not just about learners just doing this for a bit of fun, there's real learning going on here, real um, technical and scientific learning going on. We've also got culture there too, and obviously there's a whole guide there, in, in, including um, language content, um, guided practice, and what students are expected to do. Um, there's a huge amount in there, and obviously this isn't just a downloadable product that you could then just use. You do need to look at this beforehand, but it's there for you as a teacher. If you're um, like me, who were a little bit, um, who was a little bit nervous about using clear or soft clear methodology in your classroom, you can just look at this lesson plan 
plan and it tells you what you know guides you it's like a guide rope it takes you all the way along step by step and actually you won't feel nervous about clil or using clil because actually it's all there for you so if I stop talking about the lesson plan now, because obviously there's an awful lot of work gone into these and they are really exciting and really amazing. There's also um, the presentation. So uh, um, the resource um, download. So if I just click on that, hopefully oh, there we go. There it is. And if I just share that with you. Da -da -da, she says, oh, it's just downloading. There we go. It's just opening up. If I just move it onto this screen here, you'll see a really high quality lesson plan there for you with everything, the language, videos, images, you know, it's really lovely. It's got sound files embedded within it. So if I were to play this from the start, this is a really, really lovely resource that you can share and do with your learners. Um, it's got obviously um, what, what the PowerPoint contains, which will actually also be in the teacher's notes. Often there are teacher's notes within the projects and it's there for you again, to just guide you through. So it's not just a resource. You don't have to then find the sound. It's all here for you. And the reason for doing that is because we wanted to ensure a really good quality project. So students, so teachers were coming to the website, looking at these resources, seeing exactly um, what they wanted so ambitious content you know if we're looking at natural disasters here something really credible really technical language but actually had sound files had reading um had speaking opportunities and something that that was really really memorable now um again the same thing you'll find for science if you teach um if you want a science lesson if you want a maths lesson and it's not just about a nice lesson it's a memorable lesson and it makes students feel they're really engaged in appropriate curriculum and appropriate learning and interestingly um lovely Stephen Fawkes who I know is sat there uh, created a document um for the um the roadshow so if you were of, um if you went to Stephen's roadshow you'll see here you know we've got lots of projects there for primary transition and you can see the quality you know the age range and and uh, just um range of subjects really you know we've got earth and continents you know maps and and pointillismo which is a lovely expressive arts project animals of the rainforest right the way through to uh, my favorite app which is very kind of you know something that students love and something that they'd be very interested in we've also got here you know geometry um and source check so you know that in the world within which we live and you know various people talk about fake news and how it's their word or just making sure that actually our learners know that any resources any websites they look at um which is really i mean this is a really incredible project because it's just so perfect for right now especially as our learners are or we are encouraging them to use um technology all the time and obviously the learners that we saw in the video they were working from home we want them to make sure that actually the sources that they're using the pages that they're visiting are appropriate but also that they're robust as well um so i probably need to stop talking now richard nadine Stephen, is there anything that i've missed that i should add about these amazing resources no i think it's great maybe is we could right? uh, we should we get christine to present the point absolutely i was just thinking then... Be before we get yeah before and there's plenty we... of questions which we can answer maybe you know at the end uh, Absolutely. Later on. that's brilliant uh christine so our colleague christine over in montpellier is going to share with you now um some of the french resources so christine it's it's over to you <laughs> Merci. Exactly. Um, i share my screen now uh, does it work do you see it no not yet Yes? No. Oh, no. If you... It was working last yeah, time. It worked earlier on. If you click on share screen and then select the top left, the screen button. I've got... That's you... it. It's starting now. Ça marche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ça marche, c'est bon. Good. Uh, diaporama. Diaporama. Yes, I've got it. Thank you. So I'm going to present to you um, an art and French lesson for English speaking pupils. So I'm going to present to you the, the lesson plan. So this lesson plan is about painting, learning and using French language for pupils age 8 to 11, exploring la technique du pointillisme et le mouvement du pointillisme, comme l'a fait un peintre français célèbre, Georges Seurat. 
the level, the, as you can see on the top of the lesson plan, the level, the level aimed is A1 in the European framework. Um, about the, the age flexibility, even if, the, if this lesson is intended for beginners uh, 8, 8 to 11, it can be adapted for younger or older pupils by enriching or reducing the vocabulary used and the artistic production. For instance, it can, it can be adapted for younger students by further simplifying the lexicon and activities. It can, it can also be adapted for older or more advanced students in French by making the vocabulary and the paintings more complex. So in this planner, like in each planner, you can find the materials needed here um, to, uh, to, to manipulate uh, with pupil in class. You have poster sheets, paintings, and a computer to show a video on the pointillism. Bien. And the, oh, sorry. The main teaching aims are about um, uh, are here to understand the movement du, uh, artistique du pointillisme et aussi composer avec des points de couleur à la manière d'un peintre français, du peintre français Georges Seurat. Uh, le, the lesson plan gives the forces content, cognition, communication, and culture about the content, uh, communic uh, content and cognition. Oh, no, it was that. Sorry. <laughs> um, the content and connection, cognition are explaining uh, in a clear approach what the pupils will learn in art. Qu'est-ce que le pointillisme? Vo the vocabulary of colors and shapes and painting equipment vocabulary. Learn a different painting technique, le pointillisme. Um, the communication part shows a plenty of language to be learned. Les couleurs, rouge, jaune, bleu, vert, etc. Le matériel de peinture, le papier à dessin, les pinceaux, la peinture. Les consignes, couper, peindre, sécher, coller. And about le pointillisme, j'aime, je n'aime pas, je vois, je préfère. Les verbes, produire, inventer, peindre. The culture part presents the cultural <coughs> notions and the class culture as well. Comprendre en France le mouvement du pointillisme et travailler en groupe pour produire une composition. And to, uh, at, at least, um, as examples, you can see what pupils did in a French class. Uh, teachers from Montpellier led this session with the eight, nine years old students in English. So it was for her to teach English to, to her students to her pupils. We have adapted it for your learners if you want to teach two English speaking uh, learners. So here in Montpellier, you can see uh, that one pupil on the left, left uh, sorry, color, color the fruit shape, a pear shape, while learning and practicing English words and sentences and while manipulating and manipulating painting material. Um, the use uh, on the left uh, yellow and red uh, dots, and uh, on the right they use the red and blue dots. On the second, um, on the second uh, picture, you can see the square or squares of colors with dots, top blue and bottom red and blue dots. And uh, on the image on the bottom right, the pupils feel the in a tiger shape with dots of primary colors. That's yeah. it. So we and could uh, say, Christine, il y a un artiste chez, chez, dans chaque élève français. That's what you're trying to tell us. Yes. And it works very <laughs> well with the, it works very well with this class. Yeah. No, no, it's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Krista. Thank you, Christine. Um, Thank you. Again, it's great to see if you stop sharing your screen. Christine, that would be great. Uh, yes. We'll go back to it. But it's great to see some of the resources. I mean, this is live now, the website. You can, everybody can access it uh, now. I know there are plenty of questions about levels, duration. We'll answer these, I think, at the end. And I think it'd be, now it's time to move on to Stephen and the third part of our website, which is the Learning Pathways. Yes. Indeed. Good evening, everyone. Very nice to see you all 
uh, again, in some cases, we've had several webinars this week where I've seen you already, so it's very nice to see you again. So just to remind you, we've made resources in this project for children aged 8 to 14, so upper primary, lower secondary, and the transition between the two, and they've been made for use in all of the countries of the partnership, uh, plus any other countries who want to use those particular language examples, of course. So our European partners who you're meeting this evening and enjoying listening to and seeing how they talk about things have obviously brought their cultural aspects to the project and we have brought our own as well. And as we know, in England in particular at the moment, we have, um, I'm not going to say pressure, but we have interest from our inspectorate in looking at uh, work in schools, which is ambitious, which is challenging and which is bringing to our pupils cultural capital, knowledge about things which will be useful to them in their future lives. That's why we hope that these resources will give people who have never thought about using a CLIL approach at all, the impetus to have a go at it. They are ready-made resources, those 21 lesson plans of varying lengths, which you can adjust obviously to the needs of your particular class and curriculum. Uh, you can just pick them up and you'll find all the resources you need to go with them. the sound files to help you with or your colleagues with their language if they're, they're not confident in the language and the resources like videos and worksheets and other sorts of things that, that, that your students might like to. So uh, the other question we saw earlier on which is interesting for us in England as well is about time. Time is a tight commodity in our schools for languages as we know especially in primary but also quite often in secondary. So the idea that we might be able to save a little bit of time or borrow time from another area of the curriculum uh, is possibly something that will be of interest when we're talking to our school leaders and planners as well. So as well as those lesson plans, you've just seen the 21 of them in the four languages, we wanted to bring you some of the presents and you can see the three of them on the screen at the moment. So we wanted to bring to you the skill of being able to create your own lesson plan in the style of those lesson plans you've just seen. Those are very nice lesson plans, obviously, but what you want to teach might not be exactly that. You might have, have a very good colleague in the music department or want to do something on an aspect of music that we haven't covered. So the question is, how do you go about sourcing the resources, putting the lesson plan together and trying to cover all of the aspects so that you're covering your content, your music in that case, and your language and making progress in both. We also wanted to bring you voices from around the continent. So you've already met the Spanish students from Castilla y Leon. You've just been hearing Christine from the south of France, and you're going to hear some more of those as well. Uh, you're going to hear a couple in my session now, which I'm doing with Diana from Santiago de Compostela and with Ron, who's in Vienna this evening. And we also wanted to offer you some invitations, and that's where I'm going to hand straight across to Diana. Yes, uh, the invitation that we'd like to extend is for you to join an international community of practice made up of teachers from different countries. Uh, how can we do that? Well, by means of social networks. We have Twitter, we have Instagram that can connect us um, and join us in our interest in improving clear teaching. So now that you have access to these resources, if you try them out in your class, please feel free to share your feedback and to tell us how that has gone with the hashtag that you can see on the screen, eLabs. Thank you very much. Now we're gonna move on because with, if this area about skills, what we wanted to provide you with in what we call the learning phase is the sort of structure you would need to be able to build up your own lesson plan. So to do that, we ask these questions, you can see on the screen at the moment, to people who wrote those lesson plans that are in the, the resources area. So we're gonna hear from Ron, who did, who did one or two of those lesson plans for you. And then we'll hear from some others a bit later on. But you'll see I've highlighted in there in bold, three really important words to anyone who's teaching a language lesson. Where do you find your resources from? Um, what, how do you think about the language you're going to be using in your lesson? You're going to be using as the teacher, your pupils are going to be using when they're talking to you or when they're talking to each other or when they're interrogating the 
challenge that they have in that particular lesson. And then very importantly as well, how do you help your class understand when you're talking to them in the target language, how do you give them the confidence that they can cope with what's going on in front of them? So I'm going to pass over now to Ron, who's in Vienna, and you'll be intrigued by his voice as well. Okay, thank you, Stephen. Hi, everyone. So usually when I go about planning a CLIL lesson, one of the first questions that pops up is how do I find my resources? And obviously the beauty of CLIL is that it allows you to incorporate all kinds of topics from all kinds of subject areas. Um, so it may just happen uh, that you stumble upon something on the internet or you could also go the other route and start from your syllabus and then you know, uh, look, look what, you can, what you can find maybe on the internet again, or any other resource, resources that you come across. It always starts with the content, wherever that content may come from. And that is very important in CLIL because the content dictates a number of things. The content will have implications as to which language you will have to teach. It will also have implications on the kinds of tasks that you may wanna develop for your learners. Um, and it will help you to basically list up the important expressions and phrases that your learners will have to be able to use in order to deal with the content and the topic successfully. So the first distinction that you will have to think about in terms of language usually is what is the topic language, the language of learning, and uh, what language will my learners need in order to do the tasks that we set them. And once you have figured that out, then you will have to think about how can you support um, your learner's language development and how you can support the language production. And this is when you get into scaffolding. And my colleague Diana is going to tell you more about that. Yes, because uh, really scaffolding is about providing assistance to enable our learners to um, reach beyond what they would normally would be able to achieve on their own alone. So it's something that we provide temporarily and which may, uh, may range maybe from hints or feedback that we provide to maybe modeling or role modeling uh, language or, or other things that need to be necessary in order for them to achieve that competence. What will you find in the resources in terms of scaffolding? Well, you will find some visual support in the shape of um, animations or videos as well as sound files and also um, some teacher modeling. For example, in the PE, in the physical education lesson that you have about agrosport, you'll see some strategies that are provided related to a scaffolding, which by the way, some of you did mention in the chat. I think Fatima was talking about that. Thank you, that's great. So now I'm going to ask Ron yeah. to say a little bit more about his, um, about what we put into his uh, area of the learning pathways. Uh, we've got in here comments from teachers who did the planning for several of the lessons um, describing on how they, they went about that. And these things are presented to you in different formats to try and entertain you as well as distract you and to inform you. So some of them will be presented as text, some of them as presentations, and some of them as animations or as video clips of talking heads. So Ron's just going to share, I hope, one of his examples with us now. Right, so what you're going to see is just a short snippet, a short teaser of the kinds of tutorial videos that we have created for you so that you can successfully plan your own CLIL lessons. So here we go. Now that we have taken care of our first C, which uh, stands for content, we're going to have a look at the remaining three Cs, that is cognition, communication, and culture. Now, in terms of cognition, um, I always try to formulate um, can-do statements using action verbs stemming from Bloom's taxonomy. So in this particular case, I have identified um, three can-do statements, which I would like to put here. Let me just copy them in. So now we have a clear idea of the cognitive aims of this lesson. Now let's have a look at communication. So the first thing that you could do is uh, you could try to fill in these boxes at quite a specific level of detail. So what, what that means is you would think about the words or the actual phrases or chunks that your learners will be using um, during the lesson. Now language off learning usually summarizes the language um, that is dictated by the content. 
Um, in our case, the content is something um, that they are going to create themselves. So we cannot really know what kind of language we want to put here. There's one thing we do know. They will have to use a specific language in the process of creating their content. Now, this sounds a little bit like language for learning already, but since um, the process of creating that comic um, is at the center of my lesson, um, I will also put some of this language in here. So here are a couple of words that I think um, they will have to use and will have to be familiar with in order to manage. So have a... Okay, you get the idea. Back to you, Stephen. Thank you very much. So now I'm going to ask Helen to uh, go to the website that she has ready for us to have a look at, just so you can see what this looks like actually on the website itself. So there we are in the learning pathways area. That's one of the four boxes we saw on the home page. And then down below, you can see the different sections. There are five lesson plans in here after a little introduction about what lesson plans are for. So Helen has, I think, already opened lesson plan number five. And we'll just slide down there so you can see how this one is presented. So this one, as you can see, is a video interview. This was filmed with Nadine. Those people who are AWL members will know Nadine from primary events. And you can see on the left-hand side that I have never moved from this city for the past three months. That was when we filmed this back in June. I'm sitting in exactly the same position with the same pictures behind me in the same place. So that goes on. Then you can see that in between each of the little clips when Nadine is talking to me, there's an item called the learning log. This is where we try to get you to identify what you think are the key points of what Nadine has said in there. What's interesting in what she said, or what questions arise from what she said you'd like to know more about. And that's the way it proceeds. All the way through, the clips are just a few minutes long. I've changed the jumper. That's right, Christine, I don't always wear the same jumper. I have many jumpers. I'm a man of many parts. So if we keep on going down, Helen, thank you, we'll come to the next lesson plan, which just follows on. And if you click on lesson plan six, this one is a, just a different format. So in this one, you can see Kerstin, who's with us this evening, who produced a lesson plan about PE and uh, all the things that go around PE. And uh, Kerstin presents her information in two formats for those people who want to hear her talking. There she is, you can see it's a video clip. And then just below that, you can see a blue button. Oh, not so far, Helen. A blue button on the left that says, interview. And that's what I'm going to show you now on a document so you can see the other way of looking at things. So if you could just close, the, stop sharing for a minute, Helen, I'll start to share that bit. Thank you. So I'm going to share with you now the document, which is uh, what Kerstin wrote in answer to the questions that I showed you earlier on. So hopefully you can see that. And you can see that how she's exploring these issues, talking about the same things we said before. She's doing a PE lesson. Where do you get your resources? So she looked at authentic resources from the target language country. She then had to simplify some of the language and use some PE resources from our context so they made sense to the students. Thinking about the different language, you see her approach may not be exactly the same as Ron's, but it's thinking about the same questions. So it's, this is showing us that teachers approach things in different ways and highlight different things uh, according to who their pupils might be. And then the scaffolding, which is obviously a really important part of any lesson. So here we are, Kerstin talking about why she thinks it's important for students to use the language. So she needs to have steps in place to get them to do that. So that's an illustration of what that sort of thing looks like as well. So now I'll go back to my presentation, which is here. Okay. So the final section of the website, right at the bottom of that home page, is the one called the Good Practice Guide. And this is the one where we've collected views for you from around the world, not just around the continent, from people who are involved in CLIL and have been for some time and who are now either very experienced with it or are experts in one aspect or another of it. So these are the sorts of people you can see on the screen there. But just to reassure you that they are people who understand teachers and students and younger peoples as well. So they're not 
academics who are purely in their ivory towers. There are people who come out of those towers sometimes and talk to us as well. So practitioners are involved as well. And I hope if we have a little time towards the end to show you a British practitioner who talks about a particular aspect of CLIL that would be in, of interest to some of them. Um, the people who are attending. Yeah, I can show that, Stephen, if you want. It's, uh, it's I just, we're going to have a look at the other one first. But, yeah, um, it's 10 to just to let you know. 10 to, okay, so, okay. So these are the questions we were asking those experts, the sort of thing that's obviously of interest when you're approaching your senior leaders and talking about how this might have an impact on your school. And um, so I was going to show here, this is again one for Helen, I'm going to show the, the little video of, um, of Sarah Pamplin talking about her lesson. I think I'll show that one first, if that's okay. Helen, have you got this one lined up too? There she is. So we're in the second video. Uh, this Thank you. This year, I have been participating with my students in a big project uh, between different departments of the school related with comic. Um, I think that we were five departments involved, biology, uh, geography and history, Spanish, English mm -hmm. and arts. Um, they had to generate a, generate a story related with biology content or geography and history content, but uh, with the help of the English and Spanish teacher to tell the story and with the help of the arts teachers to finally do the comic. I would think the, the cultural... Oh, the Thank you very much. And then finally from me, I wanted to tell you those people who are familiar with the AWL website, we have a new area of the website where you can read more about these things as well. So this is your main focus for this evening. This is the Elapse area website, which uh, Isha showed you right at the beginning. But on the AWL web website, we have a new area called the CLIL Zone, where we're gathering information about different projects around our country and around the continent of CLIL. So there'll be obviously links to elapse and reports on elapse in there, but you'll find other things in there as well. And in a few weeks time, when we've worked out how to do it, there will be some video clips in there of Jane Driver, who some of you will know. I, I know Carlotta will know her obviously in Peterborough. She's at a school in Peterborough with a large population of students who don't have much English when they arrive in school. And she has a fascinating story about how the language department has basically made a massive impact on the whole school curriculum by planning a, a language curriculum to try and accelerate the EALP students to be learning English using CLIL approaches. We probably haven't got time to watch uh, that now, Hisha, have we? Because we need questions and answers. Probably not, because there's plenty, plenty of questions, which is wonderful. So I suggest we just stop here, but everything is on the website. So please, you know, go surf, explore, it's all it's all yours now. So maybe over to you, Jane, do you want to ask some of the questions to us? Yes, I mean, there's so many. I'm, the one we've had very recently from Tracy was about how much support non-specialist teachers would need to use the resources. So um, Richard, I would have thought that everything's there for them. Yeah, I could start with that if you want, because this is something we've been doing in Scotland in a way, embedding languages. As some of you will know, the one plus two language policy in Scotland started in 2012. And Nadine and I have been developing resources to support all primary practitioners in Scotland along the lines of what we have now on the website. So everything is there for specialist teachers, of course, but also non-specialist language teachers. So all primary school teachers will be able to use these resources. Yes. Regardless and, and of the level of French, Spanish, sorry, German. Yeah. And German, yes. And um, I think that the, the, so earlier on, we had a question about having piloted these resources. Well, in, in the UK schools, we've mostly piloted the, um, the primary ones um, because that's where, we, where people were asking us for resources. But I think in other countries, that the, the, the secondary ones have also been used for in, in Spain and um, Austria, for example. Ron or Diana, do you want to say something about um, like, you know, how you use them in, secondary, in, in early secondary lessons? Yeah, and um, for example, um, the, the, some of the, you mean if they have been piloted in secondary, is this what they are asking? 
Oh, they were, but I'm thinking yes. more. I think, yes, they were asking that. And also to say a few words perhaps on how they work in secondary schools, because we've less experience in the UK of using this method. Ah, okay, all right. Like the way uh, we have thought about the resources for secondary in, in the project um, were embedded within the, the subject that is being taught. For example, if it is physical education or music or art uh, for early stages of secondary, and as, as we said, um, they have been designed for those ages as well. I think Krista mentioned the age range is from six to 14. So, yeah. And yes, you're right, Jane, they were used in uh, Castilla Leon in a class um, because we saw, if we even saw the, the, the display, some of the displays which we yeah. have now on the website were made by the secondary pupils in Castilla Leon. And the, the floatability class, of course, was also piloted in Scotland, in Britain, in Scotland in this case, live, because I, I actually used that uh, in a class as well. So I think it was Louise who asked that question. Yeah, yes, I Louise, think, yeah. these resources were piloted you know, in several countries, in different languages. I think it's probably fair to throw it back with the greatest respect to Louise, who's now asked that question. When she, if she wants to use that, because she goes on to say she wants to use it with transition in mind and work with primary colleagues, which is wonderful. So she's looking at it from a secondary perspective. And, you know, if and when you do that, please do let us know, because we would love to hear about the impact of this. I think it's fair to say everybody would, because it's, it's you know, they are, they were designed not necessarily for that in mind, but actually can be used exactly for that. So yeah, please do. Absolutely. It's brilliant. Um, do you want me to go with another question, Jane? Please, Chris, so yes. Brilliant. Um, so um, Becky, Becky's asked quite a few questions, but um, so she said, is there an overall structure linking and developing um, grammar across the individual lesson packs or are they all one-off? And I know Stephen said that they're all one-offs, but does anybody else want to add anything to that? Nadine, maybe you want to say a bit about the, the, the way we approach grammar and some of these resources? Um, well, yeah, in some of the, the, the resources we've de developed really grammar is uh, instinctive grammar or uh, um, we don't have grammar per se, but uh, it might be that we ask uh, learners to observe grammar and deduct um, patterns themselves, but we're definitely not focusing um, on, on grammar per se. And, and uh, also to answer the question, so no, there's not an overall grammar perspective. Each lesson might cover a different a grammar point, but it's definitely not the focus of, um, of any of the lessons. And maybe can I just say, this is also because this is not necessarily the nature of CLIL. What you, what you get in CLIL most of the time is implicit grammar, and you would get that through chunking or you would get that through using the structures with a lot of scaffolding in particular contexts and uh, at the end of the day what we want our learners to do is actually use grammatical structures successfully but CLIL teaching is not to be confused with you know run-of-the-mill language teaching so, so there is a difference there. Um, I've got another, I mean, there's been lots of lovely comments from various people saying how much they love it. There's an amazing cross-curricular approach and that their head teachers and senior leaders are going to love this in their school. This is exactly what they're looking for. So really looking forward to trialing it. And then comments about um, the purpose of this as well and how, how it can be presented um, to others by Susie as well. So that's great. Um, Janet said that she was, um, she had to teach something about um, rainforest a few years ago and really struggled for high quality resources so she's very grateful for what's there. Um, Lawrence does actually ask um, how many hours of CLIL is being done weekly um, in, you know, what would you recommend or, you know, as experts or users? As many as possible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> how, long, how long is a piece of string? <laughs> I think uh, Jesus from Canary Islands said something earlier on. Of course, in the Canaries, they're quite advanced with CLIL. Jesus, do you want to type up again the number of hours that you do there? What I can say to you is that in Scotland, for example, in primary schools, the embedding takes place every day. And it could be even 10 minutes, 20 minutes, uh, or sometimes more, of course, but it's the regularity and, and we try and embed every day. And that's made a big difference for us. Well, 
interestingly, Becky said, um, you know, again, this is right up her street. She's really excited about it, but um, she wants to look at doing um, a sort of clear approach and, and is proposing perhaps one hour a week all year um, for year five and year six. So that's year 10. Um, sorry, that's 10 years old, 11 year old um, learners, nine, yeah, nine, 10, 11 years old. Um, so, but what's your opinion on this? And obviously, Ronald, you've just said do as much of this as often as you can so is one hour a week sufficient do you think or do you think that all of the language lessons should be i mean every morning this is a primary school teacher every morning you'll do the the, the health check won't you uh can you not and um, link to covid for example um, and you know how do you feel you begin with ça va très bien muy bien gracias but you can go much further every day five ten minutes i feel lonely when i feel lonely what do i do i phone my friend this should ideally be part of, of your daily teaching. Uh, uh, as Stephen said, if we can borrow from another curricular area, health and well-being in this case, wonderful. Maybe we need to, to think of starting small, not necessarily go Absolutely. for a full clear approach uh, in the whole school. It, it could be just one lesson to start with and again, I think I've seen uh, comments or questions regarding the length of lessons or whether it had to be whole units, where you could have a go with one lesson and just build on from there. Um, starting small is not necessarily a bad, um, a bad thing. Just getting your own confidence um, and spreading the word. The, the word. I yes, and I think... On the, on the lesson length, somebody, somebody's asked about the different lengths on the planners. And that, 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 that doesn't mean you have to teach it all, go for 120 minutes without stopping. It's just giving you an idea of how, you know, how many lessons this will stretch over, how much um, content. But it certainly starts small. You may not want to use all of it. That's correct. Many primary colleagues will have the confidence in the content side of, of CLIL, and they'll need support in the language side. And that's what we've been trying to provide as well through these resources. Yeah, and it could well be the opposite in secondary, couldn't it, Michelle? When exactly. The, yes. the language is not is is not the issue. It's finding it's feeling confident with the content. Correct. Mm -hmm. Which is why it'd be nice to work with a colleague. I think Jana yeah. again. You you mentioned working with a biology teacher and or somebody mentioned. Yeah, absolutely. See if you can team up with a colleague. Even that would make a difference. Um, Chris has got a question on. Has anyone got any advice on how to implement? Um, this during COVID times when when really um, you can't do that um, high quality kind of pair work and that you know back and forth has anybody got any you know any suggestions for that well I could say um, I think uh, technology really can help us here um, if possible and when available if schools have at their disposal for example tablets or other means I think it's the moment to use apps like uh, Socrative or quizzes or, you know, or WooClub that allow you to, for children to participate, uh, but with, uh, you know, still keeping the distance and respecting COVID, COVID uh, protocol. But I think technology is the moment also to integrate technology in our teaching, if possible and available. And also what I could recommend is just use what we're using at the moment. Zoom is wonderful, you know, in order to set up breakout rooms for, uh, you know, uh, speaking scenarios, practicing speaking, group tasks, and so on and so forth. Uh, and you can use that at, you know, several, several levels with, with no problem, really. At least I haven't run in any, into any problems with Zoom. Zoom or something else. I mean, not everybody in the UK will be able to use Zoom um, run in, right. in their school, but, but there are other tools, of course. Sure. And schools in Wales, for instance, have access to Microsoft Teams. So there's, you know, different, different things available that you can do the same sort of thing with. Yeah, that's right. Um, Any other questions? Or... I'm saying there's, lo there's, there's lots and lots of complementary things. Um, and Anne-Marie has said, um, these are great your, uh, resources for teachers who are new to CLIL. Um, or indeed experience, so thank you, but is there somewhere where that they can share with each other any um, further clear lessons that they create ourselves, which is a fantastic question. 
Where can they share their own clear lessons? Is that yeah, the question? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, well, so once they've gone through the good practice guide, once they've learned this, once they've used our resources, and then they've been empowered to create their own. Yes, which is exactly what we would love, Richard, from Transfer. Diana, I was going to say, Diana sent us oh, an invite. You. We're yeah. creating a community. We, You can tell that all of us here, the, the presenters, we, we've become friends, I would say, or very close. We've created a community, I would say, of colleagues and like-minded people. We would love it if you could join that community and use the hashtag, as you said, uh, Diana, you know, the elapse, and we can bounce back. All of us here, are, we do use social media a lot, or well, Twitter anyway, some of us. And so, yeah, please share with us. Yeah, because I mean, and they, I think what she's proposing is maybe to have a kind of repository where all these materials could be uploaded. So we could consider that and discuss that um, among ourselves to see to, to find a way to do that if that's interesting or maybe a double L already has a repository where you share clear resources. In any case, what I'm going to do is right after the after this is over to share on Twitter, for example, repositories where you can download clean resources, because I think some of you were also asking if this works for integration in Google Classroom or if the PowerPoint is compatible because sometimes it messes up. It should be okay. It is integratable into your Google Classroom because as, as uh, they mentioned earlier, all the resources are downloadable and you can incorporate them into whatever platform you have, whether it's Edmodo, Google Classroom, Moodle, they can be integrated in your platform. Just to add, of course, AWL is all about sharing. That's what we do. That's why we're here tonight. So one way we would share would be we'd ask Helen to host another webinar in a year or two's time and invite people back to tell us what you've been creating, the resources you've been making. But also in the chat, you'll see the link that Emmanuel has just posted to uh, Learning Through Languages UK, one of the other people working on CLIL initiatives for on our behalf where they have a resources area as well, where if there were hard copy resources or that sort of thing, we could, we could host them there as well and then explore them together. Can I just say, definitely, we have this room here, which takes up to 500 people, which we pay for the whole year round. So it's here. So if ever you want to use this room, you're very, very welcome to use it. And I suppose, you know, the idea about where resources are kept, I think very often what people do now, it tends to be that people will get in contact, as you say, via Twitter and say, click on this link where I've, you know, we've, we've often got our own Google Drive or whatever. So that, at least you can do that, can't you? Well, I think uh, we've had some great feedback, haven't we, team? I think it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, Krista, have I missed anything in the chat or have we, de have we dealt with all the questions? I think, I think there's bound to be questions that we've missed, so apologies in advance, but there is one. I don't know if it's right to end on this question, though, but, but somebody, um, somebody, and they know who they are, has said, um, has, has raised the Ofsted aspect, and they, oh, and they oh, not right specifically as such, they have said, don't, don't, don't hate them, don't, don't be haters. <laughs> They've just said it, they, they, they would be very interested in how anyone references this in their schemes of work yeah. in an Ofsted-friendly way. Um, but thinking of this from an Ofsted perspective anyway, from knowing um, people that have used and, and have looked at this, um, this is really ambitious content. Um, it's there, it's, you know, it's, it's an entire project that you can, you can incorporate into your own scheme of learning. You can build a scheme of learning around this. So this is ambitious, real life, you know, high quality technical language. Ofsted are going to be are going to love this. It's not got an Ofsted rubber stamp because you know we haven't presented it to them. But does anybody else want to answer that from there? You know we've got um, obviously Wales represented with Estin, and obviously there's you know up in Scotland too and overseas. I know you have inspectorates as well. Um, well, Ofsted don't have a prescribed methodology. They just like to see children learning and engage with their learning. Yeah. And the yeah. example we saw from Richard teaching up in Scotland was. You couldn't ask for better than that. Um, at AWL, we've had Michael Wardle, haven't we, speak to us, and he's coming to the AWL January event in London, if I can put a plug for that. And I know that he's just really enthusiastic, isn't he? He's always pushing that to say it really is, it's the quality of the learning. So. Absolutely. Great. Same thing in Scotland, yeah. Absolutely yeah, right. Say, Lindsay's just said, Education Scotland, love this approach, so yes. <laughs> Yes. Great. Can we just add on that note, as we have a number of guests from Scotland with us, Helen puts on, hosts these webinars 
very regularly. They're listed on the AWL events listing on our website. And Scottish teachers are welcome to join us. We are not at all, I mean, you'll get a lot of English references that might not be exactly appropriate, but we're very welcoming and very hospitable if you'd like to come. For anybody from any country, I love, I mean, just looking at the number of countries represented when you just said, and here he is from Vienna, and here you are from, it's just brilliant, isn't it, that we can use this. And maybe we could, I don't know if it's the, the final bit of this webinar, but somebody said, you know, I love to see Erasmus Plus money spent in such a wise way or whatever. This is so important, you know, particularly for us in the UK at the moment, but this is truly a, a, an Erasmus Plus project. Thank you, EU. Thank you, Commission. You know, we without that funding, we could not have spent two years working on this. So let's hope we're still going to be part of this wonderful program, you know, uh, next year and years to come. Um, but yeah, I think thank you, EU. Thank you, Erasmus Plus. It's an important thing to yeah. say. Yeah, and thank, thank, you, thank you all for coming along tonight and being so enthusiastic in your reaction to what we've been doing. And, and it's so nice to, to realise that people are actually going to be going out there and using it really soon. So and please, you know, do, do tell us how you get on and use the, the hashtag and let us all know so that we, we, can, we can really appreciate the difference it's made or if it hasn't then we shall have to do something about it but I'm sure it will thank you very much indeed and so let's and Risha have you got anything else to say or shall we shall we bring it to a close now I think ready to yeah ready to close now I was just going to say you can use the web address the email address on the on the website as well the lfe.net website if there's any further questions yes yes and, and and so please do just keep just keep in touch join join um, our, our community of practice as Diana says yes and let's keep it going we don't want it just to stop now we want we want to see how our our baby if you like the project actually moves off and, and takes on a life of its own so that'd be brilliant so th thank you all very much thank you helen for hosting us um so so kindly and we really enjoy being with you and um i shall wish you all a really good evening and Bye. i was going to say really on behalf of everybody if i can be self-appointed thank you to you because what a slick presentation that was i know i mean it really comes across that you all get on so well but you've put so much um preparation into this it was so slick i was very nervous when stephen passed over to me to do it I thought, oh i don't want to get it wrong because everything's gone so really well done to you thank you ever so much really, thank really you, good. And you look at those lovely comments from everyone thank you everybody. Uh, and i'd love to take a picture of anybody who's who's um brave enough to show their webcam it's quite nice to have a little picture of everybody a little selfie so Oh, shall I stop recording now? Yes, I think so. You can now, I think. Tell it. There we are. Stop recording.